Hello everyone and welcome to ovesen.net. In this video I'm gonna take a look at this machine here, which is an Amstrad CPC 6128. And this machine is actually the big brother of uh, this one, which I got from before, it's a CPC 464. This 621 uh, I actually purchased from a Norwegian seller and uh, with it I got this uh, color monitor, the CMT644. And I actually wanted a monitor because I have a, C a 464 I actually uh, had used for a color monitor uh, to test with, but uh, Today's video is about this machine and uh, it's gonna be a restoration and a little bit a repair video. The Amstrad CPC 6128 comes from a series of uh, home computers produced by Amstrad in uh, between 1984 and 1990. The 6128 itself was released in August uh, of 85 and the initial price was around uh, 800 US dollars with a color monitor. The machine also was uh, branded as a German Schneider. The uh, machine uh, runs on a CPU, uh, Scilog Z80A at 4 uh, megahertz, and it has a memory of 128 kilobyte of RAM, which is also expandable. The operating system is uh, Amstos with uh, Locomotive Basic, and uh, this uh, machine can actually also run uh, CPM. Storage media is an internal 3-inch floppy disk drive. For the video, it runs on a Motorola 6845 plus some custom gate array um, and it has uh, three uh, resolution modes uh, ranging from 160 times 200 up to 640 times 200 pixels. The audio is uh, produced by a General Instruments AY38912 sound chip uh, that has uh, three channels and uh, it also produces uh, stereo. The machine was uh, discontinued in uh, 1990 and was replaced by the 6128 Plus. All right, uh, let's uh, go right to it and start uh, investigating the machine. This is, as I said, uh, the 464 that I got before. You might have seen it in a video I made a long time ago and uh, this uh, actually fully works and the 464 has uh, 64 kilobyte of RAM and uh, this one has uh, 128 kilobytes of RAM and uh, the other difference is uh, that the old one has a cassette drive while this has a 3 inch floppy drive. Obviously an, uh, another difference is that the, the 128 is uh, quite smaller and actually lighter than the 464 and uh, also you can see the keyboard on this one it is in uh, just one color and it is an uh, yeah let's call it a normal keyboard American keyboard but this is actually a French keyboard and as you can see Q and A and Z are uh, placed differently than uh, on this keyboard so this is a QRT keyboard and this is a Acerti keyboard <laughs> Other differences on the back side, as you can see, um, the 6128 has uh, one more port. It's labeled Disk Drive 2, and uh, both has the same uh, printer port and uh, also this expansion port, uh, which on this one is uh, labeled Expansion. On the 464, it's labeled uh, Floppy Disk. They both have uh, the monitor out and the 5 volts DC out and uh, this one, uh, the 6128, also has a 12 volt DC input. Uh, while the 464 has the volume and the power switch on the side, it is on the back uh, of uh, the 128. So that was the differences between uh, those two uh, machines. and. Uh, 
This box below uh, the monitor is actually an uh, Amstrad MP3 and that is actually a TV modulator and it's actually a kind of re reverse modulator to what you are usually used to. Usually you have a modulator that uh, converts the signal from the computer to a TV. However, this one takes the signal from a TV <laughs> uh, or a TV antenna or RF signal input and then converts it to RGB out uh, that you can actually um, connect the, the monitor and that way you can actually use the monitor as a TV and you tune into the different uh, RF uh, channels here. The machine itself it is uh, good looking no particular damages but as usual there is a lot of um, dirt keyboard is uh, dirty and uh, I see inside um, the porch that uh, yeah there's a lot of dirt so uh, that means it actually needs to be cleaned properly and that's uh, one of the tasks of this video the machine should be uh, working it was sold as working however uh, the seller informed me that the floppy drive is not working and uh, because of that I already ordered a new drive belt for the drive and um, I'm gonna change that uh, no matter what. And backside on the machine is a little bit uh, scratchy and uh, yeah the label is intact. Alright, what are we waiting for? Let's see if it actually works. Turning on the machine. Well, it seems to be dead no power led uh, that seems a bit uh, disappointing i did actually test it briefly when i got it and uh, at that time it uh, actually worked so something has happened so i'm just uh, gonna check the voltage uh, output from the monitor uh, just to make sure it gives out 12 volts so let's see yeah exactly 12 volts so nothing wrong there oh i just realized something <laughs> stupid uh, of course you need a five volt uh, input from uh, from the monitor <laughs> not a 12 volt so just plugging that one in all right that looks better yeah <laughs> so the machine is actually working nice so this machine needs 5 volts uh, input uh, to operate and also the 12 volt input uh, for the floppy drive actually. So let me test if it can read from the disk. The command for that is cat. So I hear the disk is uh, spinning but uh, it gives out an error disk missing. So let's go ahead and open this up and start uh, the restoration work. I'm gonna start by opening the case now and uh, yeah, take it from there. I actually don't know that much about um, the Amstrads. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with it. Um, actually back in the day I had a Commodore 64 but I had a friend that had, ha, had an Amstrad uh, CPC 464 with a monochrome monitor and uh, I used to be there and uh, we sat down and typed in some uh, games and programs from magazines and things like that. It was uh, quite fun but for me the Commodore 64 was uh, the main machine. There's also two uh, screws on the side of the floppy drive, so I'm gonna remove those. And as w always be careful because there might be some uh, keyboard uh, yeah, cables. And I think it's over on uh, this side. Yeah, it is. It's actually a ribbon cable over on the, the left side, so. All right, this is the inside and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit dusty and uh, dirty. So it needs a good cleaning. The CPC runs um, 
Z80 processor and this one is uh, the Z80 from ST. The keyboard uh, as well, very dirty. And it has a date code of 9207. Um, and uh, most of the chips are uh, dated uh, from 88. And here's the floppy drive and it's a three inch and uh, while uh, other manufacturers uh, standardized on 3.5 inch uh, Amstrad and Spectrum, they selected the three inch. Anyway, this machine needs a good cleaning inside out and I'll start by removing the keyboard and uh, then remove uh, the motherboard. Attached to the keyboard is uh, also a few, um, yeah, it's the power LED and uh, a little speaker. So I'll just uh, remove those contacts as well. Come on. Next, I'm going to remove uh, the actual keyboard from uh, the case. Before I clean the uh, top case, I want to remove these uh, wires and things and this speaker as well. These uh, cable holders here are actually filled with glue, so I need to yeah, remove that glue. Make sure I don't cut the wires. <laughs> Then I want to remove the PCB from the bottom case because I want to clean that too and of course I want to clean the PCB itself. And it has a couple of screws. I think that was the screws for the PCB so now I'm going to remove the stuff here, the power switch. and. Uh, The volume control and also I want to remove um, the floppy drive connection. So I'm actually going to leave it in the PCB and uh, instead remove uh, the contacts from the drive. All right, so now the whole thing can be lifted away. I think, no, there is, there is in fact another screw on the PCB. <laughs> it was hidden underneath the cables. So that's it. All right, look at all this uh, dirt. <laughs> all right, so now I can take uh, the case downstairs and give it a good cleaning. It's time to take a look at the keyboard, which is uh, very dirty, but uh, yeah, not crazy, but yeah, maybe normal after uh, 30 years. <laughs> we'll see when we remove the keycaps and I'm gonna use my keycap puller for uh, that. All right, so uh, as expected, there is a small spring under each uh, key. And the key itself has a little spring in the middle. All 
tonight I'm gonna speed this up while playing some music, so uh, sit back and enjoy. So that revealed a good deal of uh, old uh, <laughs> dirt. Mm. Wow. So after vacuuming uh, the keyboard it looks uh, much better but I'm gonna clean the surface but before that I actually realized I did a mistake. I took off uh, some of the keys uh, in a bit of a brute force and uh, some of them has these uh, metal um, yeah, bars like this and uh, no some of those are inside the keyboard. <laughs> And also I want to inspect uh, uh, underneath the plastic to see if it looks okay. So I'm gonna remove the back plate and it's just uh, like uh, these tabs, plastic tabs. You just uh, push them a little bit and then press and then the whole thing comes loose. So like that. So now we see the membrane and uh, there is a lot of dirt on top of it so I'm glad I took it off. And here's the other metal part that uh, <laughs> fell into the keyboard. So there seemed to be some kind of a liquid under the membrane, some kind of um, oil, I'm not really sure what it is. I'm gonna try and clean, uh, clean off the membrane with some um, IPA and gently rub it off. See all that dirt? <laughs> So that's much better, now I can take this uh, plastic and just clean it uh, really well in the sink. So the keys have been cleaned and they came out really nice, but as you can see there is some yellowing. Um, don't know how good it uh, shows on the video, but um, this is the original grey color on the back side and on the front you see there are uh, yellowing so I'm gonna need to retro bright these. And for the springs I just uh, rinse them in uh, cold water and nothing else and uh, there's no rust on these so these are good. For retro biting I'm using this uh, saloon cream which is 12% uh, hydrogen peroxide and I just add a little amount um, into these two bags of uh, keys and then distribute it uh, inside the bag. So I pressed out as much air as possible and then I have uh, closed the bags and um, distributed the, the keys a little bit uh, spread uh, out. Then into the oven at uh, 50 degrees. I have found that this actually works. Uh, no need for uh, any sunlight or anything like that. Uh, there's not much sun here anyway nowadays, just uh, uh, maybe 20 minutes per day. <laughs> Leave it there for at least uh, three hours. 
and I uh, turned them around and distributed the cream uh, regularly through that uh, period. While the keys are baking, there's uh, always something else I can do in the meantime, and um, the motherboard is next. So I have uh, had it out in my garage and uh, used air to blow off all the dust, and now I'm gonna clean the whole board with some uh, IPA. The usual method, use cotton swabs. So there is uh, some dirt, as you can see, there's always. I just freshen up the contacts a bit with a fiberglass pen. You see how shiny they get. Finally a little contact cleaner in the contacts. A little bit inside the power switch as well. That was the PCB serviced and uh, next up is the floppy drive. This is a 3 inch uh, floppy drive and uh, it's actually the first time I, uh, I have a 3 inch floppy drive to be servicing and uh, it's not working. And the most probable cause of that is uh, the drive belt for this drive. And look, yeah, here it is. It is actually, yeah, it is broken. Let's see, it's in two pieces. Otherwise this drive looks to be in good shape, uh, not that dirty actually. I did blow away the dust, uh, but uh, otherwise it looks okay. I'm gonna start by uh, removing the, the front cover just to be able to clean it better. I'm also taking off the eject button. I want to clean that one too. It's really dirty, so. So then I start to clean off as much dirt as I can and try to get this stepper motor axle clean and remove the old grease.
Then I clean the actual drive head, uh, read and write head, I mean, with a cotton swab with some alcohol and just rub gently. Now I'm gonna wait with the front cover because I wanna uh, remove uh, the PCB actually to be able to to replace the belt. <music> to get the PCB uh, out of the way, I need to. I remove this contact as well. I think that's enough to make me reach uh, down there and uh, attach the new belt. And here it is. Hopefully it's the correct one. Seems to be the correct uh, diameter on this, yes. So let's see if we can uh, attach this one then. <laughs> Oh, there's even one more piece of the old belt. <laughs> Seems like it glued itself to uh, the axle there. So I need to remove that rubber first. So let's see if I can clean this belt drive. So can I make this uh, fit? <laughs> I guess I just turn it around and then it will get on. Yeah, that was easy. Yeah, it seems like it's turning correctly. All right, I think we're good to go. So I'm gonna assemble the drive now. Hmm, this pin, <laughs> where is that from? Actually, I didn't see it come out, so I'm not really sure where it should go. <laughs> Before I uh, close up the drive, I'm gonna lubricate a little bit with some, um, yeah, this is some silicone fat. Just put a little amount onto the stepper motor axle and also onto this uh, drive rail here. About this little pin I actually googled a bit and I actually found out that that is the uh, right protection pin and it actually fell out when I had uh, the PCB uh, loose. And that should actually go into a little hole here, if I can manage to uh, put it back. Like that. Alright, so now we're good to go. The drive is finished. It is time to uh, assemble the keyboard and uh, yeah. I think it's better to install all the keys before I um, add the membrane backplate.
So I'll start with these uh, larger, a uh, little bit more complicated uh, keys. Uh, well, the enter key is not uh, complicated, but uh, the space uh, bar might be a little bit different because, um, well, it has uh, this um, met metal bar uh, behind. It has uh, three springs, uh, the space bar, and uh, two are a little bit uh, special, and one is the same as the rest. By the way, the retro brighting came out uh, really nice. Um, now all the keys are uh, close to the original grey. I can see a little hint of yellowish color uh, left over, but uh, I think this is okay. And then we should uh, attach this metal rod to this uh, hooks. Then we have these three little uh, metal supports. So I think they go on these three keys. Yeah, that must be it. When I started to um, put the keys back into place, I actually noticed that the most of the springs have started to corrode. I don't know if it's because of the cleaning and the water, but uh, anyway, I'm taking them all off and I'm gonna treat them with a little uh, vinegar. So just a little white vinegar, 35%. It's been a few minutes and look how uh, brown the vinegar is uh, become and so I just leave it in the vinegar for some more time. So I threw away the vinegar and I did not rinse it off in water. I just uh, dried with uh, some paper towel and uh, yeah, now I'm just gonna spray a little bit of uh, WD-40. because that prevents additional um, corrosion and uh, lubricates and drives out the moist. So now this looks like uh, brand new springs actually. A little bit more work, but <laughs> I think it's uh, worth it. Well, it's not exactly easy. I have to bend them sideways, but... Uh, so I think a better way to do it is to actually uh, unclip them from the black uh, clips and then place them correctly into the, the key and then pull them back. Like that. So now I'm actually gonna um, attach the keyboard to the back plate. And that's just uh, to press these plastic clips uh, into position. So now I'm gonna speed through the remaining keys and I have a cheat sheet here and here we go.
all right that was all the keycaps except one and uh, you might see why i didn't put this one in i always take very good care about the, all the springs and make sure i don't uh, lose anything and uh, well i came out uh, one spring short so i have to go looking now see if i can find it or it might be that I have actually put two springs uh, under one of the keycaps. Um, yeah, if that's the case, then I have to remove everyone. <laughs> All right, I have been searching my whole kitchen and uh, also in my lab. Um, and I inspected every key and uh, I cannot find the missing spring. But I have transplanted it from uh, the F9 key to the M and... Uh, while I don't have any spare uh, springs for an Amstrad keyboard, I do have uh, lots of spares for a Commodore 64 keyboard and uh, that fits uh, just as well. So I hope uh, that uh, any Amstrad fans uh, won't get upset by this, but uh, I'm actually transplanting a Commodore 64 spring to this Amstrad keyboard. Over to the PCB again and um, there are some uh, electrolyte capacitors on this board and I was uh, thinking about uh, recapping it if I can find uh, all the caps and I think I have everyone and I have uh, drew a little list here and um, no that's not the list that's the layout the list is here so I think I got everyone there are 12 electrolytes 11 here and one over on this side and uh, as you know I uh, I usually do a recapping of uh, these old boards if I can because old electrolyte capacitors can start to leak and uh, not only leak the liquid but they can start leak leaking current. Yeah, I found all the different values for the caps and uh, heating up my desoldering station. So I have uh, turned on my uh, homemade uh, fan to uh, drag away the smoke when uh, soldering. So the fan combined with the desoldering station makes a bit of a noise, but I will uh, turn that down. I have marked all the caps on the back side, so uh, it's easier not to do a mistake. Just a little black dot. That was the desoldering and now I'm gonna clean up a little bit um, before I start to solder in the new ones. So I'm adding uh, the new caps and it's uh, very important to find the correct polarity. And this one is actually a bipolar, so uh, that doesn't matter on that one. All right, soldering time. I'm gonna speed up this a little bit, so uh, see you in a while.
so that was all the soldering and uh, I think it went smooth just a little bit of cleaning uh, before I can start testing this machine time to do a little test and uh, yeah I'm gonna hook up uh, the board to the monitor I have already connected uh, the keyboard so let's see if this still works yes still works <laughs> amazing keyboard seems to be well <laughs> not working so this is uh, when I press the number three key C does not work, weed, B just prints GFB, <laughs> alright so there's obviously something wrong with uh, this keyboard so I have to check out that. <laughs> 